morning. Um, uh, thanks for having us. My name is Siobhan Fern. I'm with the Police and Community Safety Partnership here in Newry Morn, so in the Newry Morn Down uh, uh, District. So thanks very much for participating this morning. Uh, my role here is uh, really just to introduce um, our, our speakers. Um, so I'm going to hand over to oh, over to them. We have Dr. Uh, Blanet Carden, um, who's going to speak for about five uh, to ten minutes, just about uh, drugs, and then we'll hand over to uh, Mr. John Edwards. Then he's going to talk um, about his experiences. So I hope you'll give them um, your your attention I know there will probably be, be questions and stuff um, at the very end so I'd appreciate you uh, using this opportunity to ask uh, whatever you need to do. So I'll, I'll hand over to Dr. Lana Carlin. Thank you. Um, with no further ado, thank you. Thank you. As Siobhan said, my name is Blanet and I'm a doctor. Um, I, all I ever wanted to be growing up was a doctor. Well, up until about 11 I wanted to be a princess but then I realised that wasn't a real job and I decided I wanted to be a doctor. Does anyone here know what they want to be when they grow up? What do you want to be? Work with horses. Work with horses. Anybody over here? People often say to me they want to be teachers, nurses, vets. All I ever wanted to be was a doctor. I'm here today to talk to you about drugs and in particular I want to mention legal highs. What does the word legal mean? Anybody know? Exactly. Legal basically means is that it's not against the law. And there's a lot of drugs flying about at the minute that are classified as legal highs. Now, legal, although it may mean that it's not against the law, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is. So a lot of these legal drugs aren't actually sold for, for consumption by humans, for people to eat. They're sold as the likes of plant food or incense or sand or salt. There's different ways that these drugs are sold. So for example, say I've come in here today, I'm a doctor. Most people, most people trust doctors. I have, say, a bag of sweets in my hand. I'm going to offer you a sweet. The majority of you would probably take one of those sweets, wouldn't you? Say they're Skittles. I love Skittles. They're my favourite. But then I say to you, I actually find these Skittles half open in the car park on the way in here. Don't know how long they've been there, but I kind of lifted them up, dusted them off. They look fine. Would you take one now? No. No, why not? You don't know what they are, they might be dirty. Somebody might have licked them, put them back in the bag. A dog might have popped up and had a wee pee on them. No way, you wouldn't take them. Just keep that in mind. So I wanna tell you just a few stories about um, the, re the side effects of drugs. Some people react to drugs in different ways. So for example, the way you might react to a drug is gonna be completely different to the way you might react to a drug for the simple reason that you're completely different people. You have different parents. You have different genes and genetics, so you're going to react completely differently. Some people react in such a way that they get very sleepy, drowsy, relaxed. Some people become very hyperactive. They're bouncing off the walls. They feel they can do anything at all, anything at all, nothing's impossible. And some people actually start to see things. They may see blood dripping down the wall. They can look at their friends and their friends mightn't have faces. They could start hearing things, hearing commands from voices telling them to do awful, awful things. Everybody reacts in different ways. And the same as you might take those sweets from me, with God knows what on them. Exact same reasons as drugs. We do not know what is in a drug. We do not know how you're going to react to them. Drugs could have poisons in them. Drugs could have anything in them. And with these legal highs, the thing is we don't technically know a lot of the time what, what exactly is in them. I'll tell you a few stories about some cases that I've seen during my time working as a doctor. Now I've worked in different places. I've worked in a &E, I've worked in the wards. I've actually worked in addictions as well for a while. Um, and there was one case of a 24-year-old girl who had, um, she was in university and she was at a house party. I'd been drinking some alcohol and thought she would take a legal high. She was one of these people that reacted in such a way that she was bouncing off the wall. She was feeling great. She was as happy as Larry, high as a kite. And she, she really truly believed she could fly as a result of these drugs. This is how the drugs made her feel. She truly believed that she could fly. She went upstairs in this house party to the upstairs bedroom, opened the window and decided she would fly. But of course, she couldn't fly. Humans can't fly. So what happened? All the way down to the ground, banged her head, brain bleed, she died. And that's as a direct result of taking it. It was her first ever time taking one of these drugs. Another story I'll tell you about is there was a group of fellas, I think they were actually from down south. They were up in Belfast celebrating, um, it was an 18th birthday party for one of the lads. 
when this particular fella had reacted in such a way that he, he became very sleepy, relaxed, chilled out and he he ended up not going out with the rest of the fellas. He's passed out in the hotel that they were staying in in Belfast and the rest of the lads all went out partying to the nightclubs, whatever they did. And when they came back a few hours later, the fella had actually blacked out in the bed and had vomited, but he was lying flat on his back. So he choked and he died. By the time they came back from that club, he was lying in that bed dead. And that was as a direct result of taking drugs. And it's not people that take these for the first time. It's not, uh, no, it's not people that take these all the time. It can just happen one time and that's you. You know, it's really, really bad. And all those hopes and dreams of being, working with horses, being a teacher, being a nurse, dashed, gone. And think of who you're leaving behind, your family, your friends, your grannies, your grandparents, your uncles, nieces, nephews. Everyone is going to be affected by that one split decision that you've made. I'll sum up, I've probably talked for too long as it is. But legal does not mean safe. People have lots of different side effects, as we've discussed, and just really it's not worth it. Don't do it, because people die, people have died, people do die, and people continue to die as a direct result of taking these drugs. Has anyone ever seen the film Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? And not the one with Johnny Depp, the older <coughs> one. Yeah. There's a scene in that where they're, they're having a lovely wee tour of the chocolate factory and they're in a boat and it's a lovely wee boat trip and then the boat starts to go really fast and really fast and really faster and faster and all these images start flashing off of bugs and strange faces and I imagine that's what it can be like to take drugs. When I watched this as a child it used to scare the life out of me but if you all go home tonight and look it up on YouTube or download the video off Amazon or whatever you can do but watch that one scene tonight, that's your homework and I'll tell you, I'll put you off taking any drugs ever again. So just don't do it. It's not worth it. All right? Any questions? No? That's good, because I probably wouldn't know the answer anyway. <laughs> Have you got a wee question? Uh, what, what would you say to someone who's going to take drugs? I would say don't do it. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. A lot of people just make these split decisions, whether it's under peer pressure, whether they've taken a bit of alcohol and they feel brave. Um, it's not worth it. You do not know what's going to be in that drug, whether it's poison, whether it's something else in it. If you wouldn't take that sweet out of that dirty bag, you shouldn't take a drug because the sweet's going to be a whole lot safer. I'll tell you that. Some people take drugs that are poisoned and their, their organs start to disintegrate in their bodies. They start to fail. And it's just not worth it. Just don't do it. If, you ever, if you're ever in the position in the future where someone does offer you something, think of my face. Just don't do it. All right? Thank you. Thank you. So, just now introduce Mr. Tron Edwards. He's going to talk to you now. So, you've got about 15 minutes then. So, just okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, it's really nice to meet you all. Uh, I hope that you're all kind of relaxed. Just kind of imagine you're at your granny's or your grandfather's all right and just chill out and relax. And if you have any questions, even ones that are not written on that bit of paper, just, just maybe um, just remember them and I'll give you some time at the end of my little chat to talk to you, to, to answer your questions. Uh, it, it's, it's really good to be here this morning because, um, uh, I mean, you've probably seen me with my bally head and, and you look at me and you think, uh, who, who, who is this guy? How has he got authority to speak to us? I'm a former drug addict and I'm a former alcoholic. I took drugs for over 20 years. I've had a liver transplant. I've had cancer twice because of it. I've had hepatitis C. I had to get 12 months treatment just last year. Uh, I had to get 41 pints of blood transfused into my body over the last 12 months just to keep me alive. But when I was your age is when I began to take drugs. I actually got kicked out of school when I was 15 and I've had no education since then. All because when I was your age I began to experiment with drugs. We've heard about legal highs this morning. We might think that's a new thing that's in society. Legal highs is not really a new thing, and I'll explain that in a moment. But I want to just get under your skin a little bit, and I really just ask you just to give your attention. Because taking drugs and being uh, struggling in life is not just about the action of taking drugs. We're all human beings. You're, you're, you're young ladies who have dreams of being, working with horses or being a nurse or a doctor or whatever it is that you want to do. Those dreams that you have are so precious. Whatever it is, or you might not be sure what you want to do with your future. 
But when you're a young teenager, are you, now what's the average age in here today? 15. Okay, but well when, you're, when you're a young teenager and, and you, you know, you've gone through puberty and you're changed and you're thinking about your future, it's a time in life where you can be, really feel insecure. And let me just stand in your shoes for a minute. I remember when I was your age and a little bit younger. I can still remember what it was like. I was brought up in Dublin, um, in a Catholic family. My father was a, a businessman, and, but he was a heavy drinker as well. And my family had problems in it. And when I reached your age, a little bit younger, I was very, very shy and insecure. I had a bad stutter. I could hardly put two words together. If I would go into a group of people in a room, or even like this, I was so incredibly shy. I would blush at the slightest thing. Somebody would even look at me and I would blush. And for me, personally, in my life story, that was the biggest problem in the world to me. I thought nobody had the shyness or the, the, the problems that I, the, I thought the problems I had were bigger than anybody else in the world. And then when I began to change and I began to fancy girls and all this kind of stuff, for me to, for me to talk because of my stamina was difficult. I go into a room of people and I would compare myself with everybody else. I, I would look at somebody and say, oh, I wish I had their height or I wish I had their looks, or I wish I had that person's confidence, or I wish I had the clothes that that person had. I always wanted what other people had, and I never seemed to be satisfied with what I had myself. Yeah, and I never seemed to get the attention from other people. Because I found it so difficult to express myself amongst other people, I found it difficult to get noticed within a crowd. And that was an important thing for me. And you know something, it's an important thing for every young teenager that we have some kind of sense of significance about who we are. And when we're shy, and when we're insecure, and when we have low self-esteem, which, you know something, nearly every single teenager struggles with that in one way or another. But the trouble is, we don't talk about it. We don't talk to each other about it. We pretend we're confident. We pretend that we have courage. We pretend that we have a good self-esteem. We pretend that we have a good home life. But often there's terrible struggles in our personal lives and our heads are wrecked and we don't communicate to other people about it. The first problem I had as a young teenager was the fact that I didn't talk to my teacher, I didn't talk to my parents, and I didn't talk to my friends about the genuine struggles I had. Now, I'm talking to you in here today. This will be the reality in many of your worlds in here. Can I tell you, as I'm 60 years of age, I'm old enough to be your great-grandfather probably, but you know something? I still communicate with young people because I know how you think, I know how you tick and I found myself like that as a young person. I remember one day the group of people I was hanging out with were a little bit boring so there were some other young people hanging out by the community centre and I can remember the, the very moment that I decided to go and hang out with these people. It seemed that their life was a bit more adventurous than mine. I knew they were smoking cannabis, I knew they were taking different drugs but the girls were prettier with them and I wanted to go and hang out with these guys and girls. I went over and I began to hang out with them. And under pressure from them, I began to take drugs. And I found that in my school, the fact that I was smoking a bit of cannabis, that I was smoking a bit of drugs, I got a bit of a reputation. And my self-esteem began to become attached to the fact that I was doing bad things, naughty things, taking drugs and doing a little bit of criminal behavior, just very, very mild stuff. And my, my self-esteem began to become attached to my behavior. But my behaviour, I knew within myself that my behaviour wasn't right. Back then, in the 60s and 70s, there was legal highs back then you were able to get. You could go into chemists and you could buy cough bottles that had morphine in them. You, you know what morphine is? a strong painkiller like heroin. And so we used to drink these cough bottles. You can't get them anymore, that's why I can tell you about them now. It's impossible to get them. You used to get nasal inhalers, a little bit like Vicks. But Vicks is a completely different thing. They were called Benzedrex nasal inhalers. And these nasal inhalers had, had, had benzedrine speed in them, which is a bit like the legal highs that you get today. So we used to take them and be stoned out of our heads for maybe eight hours. And then you'd be in deep depression for maybe a week after it. It's so wreck your head. The legal highs that you get today, often they're based with a, a drug that is in cannabis called cannabaloid. It's an ingredient that's in cannabis. But there are other ingredients that people have. I work full time now. I've been clean off drugs and drink for 24 years. I'm married now. I've got a beautiful wife. I've got four stepchildren. I've got four grandkids. I've opened up seven rehabilitation centres. I've travelled the world. We've got, I've made the biggest syringe in the world with my friend Kelvin. who's on the back here. He's made it. 
And the biggest syringe in the world is actually sitting outside the school at the moment. It's 33 foot long by 6 foot in diameter. And we travel all over Britain and Ireland talking to young people about our life stories and about the mistakes that we made when we, when you were, young, when we were young. If you have a dream to be somebody who looks, who loves horses. I loved horses when I was a kid. I used to train horses and go down Dollymount Beach in Clontarf in Dublin and exercise the horses on the three mile stretch of, of beach. I used to, used to gallop, we had hunters and jumpers and all that. I used to take them down there and exercise them. I used to ride like a jockey because I'm small and I loved horses. And I used to go to the Phoenix Park to work with some of the horses there. And I was look, mucking out the stables and grooming the horses and all that was attached to that. And there were some good people I hung out with around there. But I already began to start taking drugs. I already began to hang out with some other people that were taking legal highs back then. And I became addicted. And I ended up overdosing nearly 20 times in my life. I ended up in mental institutions because of my drug addiction. I ended up in padded cells and straitjackets because of my drug abuse. I ended up homeless and living on the streets of London, begging for a living. I ended up overdosing at least 20 times on breathing machines and heart machines just to keep me alive. I ended up losing everything and sleeping in the freezing cold, nights like last night in the snow, sleeping out in cardboard boxes in the West End of London. All because when I was a teenager, I didn't develop my confidence, I didn't develop my self-esteem. I'd begun to take legal highs and before I knew it, I was taking illegal highs. Today, out of a group of 30 people, there's about 20 to 30 people in this room here at the moment. My mates, 30 of us, there's only 7 of us alive today. All my mates have died from accidental overdoses, from suicide, from AIDS and from hepatitis C. I've had hep C. I've just finished my treatment last year, as I said to you earlier. And I just thank God that my life is free today, that I'm completely clean for 24 years. But if you're insecure, if you're, a lot of the legal highs, and I can give you the names of them and I have them written in my book here. I was on the phone to, to a young couple I'm working with in Bradford at the moment. I was talking with them this morning. I'm detoxing them off legal highs at the moment. They're going into a rehab next week. And uh, they're doing really, really well. And they were saying to me that legal highs are more dangerous than heroin and cocaine and a lot of the drugs that are on the streets. Young people, when you're out there hanging out with people or you're meeting guys and you're under peer pressure and you're feeling frightened and insecure and you're feeling that you, you want to be popular amongst the people. Don't gain a reputation of somebody who gives in to taking these things. Gain a reputation of somebody who's going to be different. Somebody who's able to say, oh, I'm, I'm going to focus on my future. I'm going to work at horses when I get older. Or I'm going to be a nurse or a doctor or a teacher or a professional or a hairdresser or whatever it is that you want to do. Stand up and be different. Begin to develop your self-confidence now that you make a choice not to take that legal high, not to smoke that cannabis. I could speak for hours on this kind of stuff and I could tell you stories of many people who've died and I could also tell you stories of many people who've got clean from these drugs. I've helped girls, I've taken them off the streets, girls who were just like yourself in nice schools like this and these girls became prostitutes. These girls lived on the streets and stuck needles in their arms. They've had their babies taken off of them. But I've been able to help these girls. My wife and I take them into our home. We take them off drugs. And these girls today have their babies back. They're married to good men and they lead good lives and they speak in schools and other places. I can tell you where I've worked with paramilitaries and I've helped them come out of these organizations. I've worked with drug dealers. I've worked with the mafia and helped some of these people come out of these organizations and see themselves set free. And these people now work alongside the police and we see tens of thousands of gang members and people involved in crime come out of crime and get their lives back together again. That's what I do now. That's my qualification. Because I got kicked out of school when I was 15 for knocking out the history teacher down in Dublin. Not to be recommended. Okay? <laughs> Not to be recommended, guys. Okay? But that's how chaotic my life became. Today, with the help of God, I am completely set free. I don't touch any drugs. I don't touch any alcohol. Not a drop of alcohol goes past my lips. I have learned to have confidence. I have learned not to brush anymore. I have learned to have a smile on the inside, not just a smile on the outside. I have learned to be strong on the inside and know that I can work with anybody. Girls, that's what life is about. It's about developing your character and not using substances to help you develop your character. Because if you link yourself to a substance, whether it's legal or illegal, and you put some of your security in the help of a substance, whether it's alcohol or drugs, and you build your confidence with the help of that substance, you are in danger of developing a life-controlling problem. 
you're in danger of not dealing your, with your issues. Thanks. You're in danger of not dealing with your issues. And you could end up being self-harming or having an eating disorder. I teach in girls' rehabilitation centres. I work with young girls who have eating disorders and self-harm. That also is a life-controlling problem. The secret of overcoming these things, and if anybody struggles with these issues, the secret is very simple. Begin to talk about these things with somebody you can trust. Even mention it to your school teacher or to a police officer or to maybe your parent if you're able to speak to your parent. But speak to a safe individual. It might be a friend or it might be an adult that you know, an older person than you, because you are young adults yourself. Speak to somebody about your issues. I want you to remember this little sentence. A problem shared is a problem halved. That's a very old saying, but again, it holds an awful lot of truth. Um, I, I, you know, just let you a little bit under my skin again in my own personal life. I, I was sexually abused in my life. I was physically abused and mentally abused. And I was absolutely broken in my life. I, I, as a man even, I cried a lot. I was absolutely broken as a human being. Completely and totally broken by what other people did to me. And it didn't happen in my own family. It happened, some of the stuff happened by people outside my family. But today I stand before you, complete and whole as a human being. And you need people like role models, like myself, who made the mistakes when we were young teenagers just like you. And we're coming back, we've been saved from death, and we've come back to go into schools, and I go to prisons and onto the streets. And we'll be in Uri all week in this syringe. You'll see us down in the town centre. Come and talk to us. I'm giving my entire life story in the Uri Elam Church on Sunday morning. Come down if you like and listen to my entire life story and share with you the secrets how I got set free. But I, I wish you well in your life. And I say, be strong in the inside. <coughs> Find that place inside of yourself where your smile is, where your smile resides. Get in touch with that place. And don't use substances, whether legal or illegal, to help you have confidence to cope with life. Or to help you get on with the gang. Don't come under peer pressure and so on. So I know I've, I've dumped a lot on you. I've thrown a lot at you. But I hope what we have all shared here with you this morning has inspired you to be strong, to be a woman of substance, to be somebody who will be creative, who will make it in life, to be somebody who will become that person that you want to be, that doctor or nurse or people working with animals. Be that person you want to be. Fight for your life. You need to find that strength within yourself. And if you do that, you will have the most amazing life that you can dream of. I've got an amazing life now. My grandkids, and I've no children of my own, but I tell you, for me, one of the biggest things, the other day before I came over here, my granddaughter Melissa, she's only three, she climbed up on my chest, she was sleepy, we'd been playing together, she was sleepy, and she climbed up on my chest and she fell asleep in my chest. And I'm looking down at her and I'm nearly in tears, looking at my granddaughter, thinking, how can these beautiful things be happening to me? I'll tell you why they're happening. I finally find this, I finally found the strength to stand up on the inside and become the person that I really am. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. Stand up inside, young people. Don't let men or, or, or other girls or anybody bully you or intimidate you into, into yielding to legal highs or, Ill, or, or illegal highs. Be the woman that you're created to be. Be the woman that is going to become that, that dream person that you can see in your future. Talk about your issues and you will do well in life. Thank you so much. Questions. I think we've only got a couple of minutes. How easily did you get addicted to drugs? Very easily. You take some of these drugs, especially some of the legal highs, you can become psychologically addicted very, very quickly within, within weeks. Don't mess with them. If you know anybody who's messing with them, um, point them to help. We have a website, it's called walkingfree.org, and we have live streaming where we will talk live on the internet, and you can, you can phone, text, email, and Skype us in. We'll be able to help people. Point them to people like us. We won't abuse them in any way, but it'll help them and point them in the right direction. Anybody else? What motivated you to stop? What motivated? We're living on the streets. I've been homeless. And I eventually, when my father died, I was barred from going to my own father's funeral. And I was drinking down a back alley in London the morning my father was buried. And I said earlier that some things have broken deep within me. The morning my dad got buried, I was so ashamed of myself. I, was so, I, I felt so bad. Something very deep within my being broke. And I said, I've had enough of this. I can't live like this anymore. Out in the freezing cold streets in winter. And I thought, I can't live like this anymore. And it was that kind of darkness and brokenness motivated me to get my life together. When you're like that, you've got two options. Suicide or life. I chose life. 
And I suggest that you guys do the same. Anybody else? And how did you feel about yourself by using drugs? Sorry? How did you feel about yourself by using drugs? How did I feel about myself by using drugs? I felt like I was a waste of space. I felt I was a nuisance to everybody. I felt like I, uh, my family didn't want to know me anymore. My um, self-esteem might as well have just drained down the gutter that I lived in. And uh, I just felt awful about myself. You know? How hard was it to get clean of drugs? Very hard. But I was determined. And if you're really determined to get something in life, you can get it. That's one thing I've learned. I could see myself clean one day. And I could see a picture of myself clean and helping people. I could see myself talking in classrooms and in prisons and going on the streets helping people. And I took, like, I took a snapshot of that. And I focused everything within myself to gain that. And I put myself into a Christian, into a Christian rehab. I, I, for me personally, I just prayed and asked God to help me. And I had a miracle, I believe, that happened in my life that completely changed me. But now I left all my old friends. I hang out with people that are good for me. I do all the right things. I train, I work out and try and keep myself fit because I've had so many sicknesses because of my addictions. I've got to train and keep fit. I read a lot. I've educated myself. I went back to school, learned how to type. I've written three books now that have been bestsellers. I, I've uh, had my own television programs. I've learned how to do business administration so I can open rehabs and all kind of stuff. I, I really focus myself. But you do that for your future as well. Anybody else? How would you advise someone who is addicted to drugs on how to get help? Say that again. How would you advise someone who is addicted to drugs on how to get help? I would advise somebody, I always try and paint a picture of the better future that people can have if they choose to stop taking drugs. And then I will meet them and talk with them and I'll meet them either through Facebook or, or, or Twitter or I might meet them on the streets, they might get in touch with me to meet with them. And I'll talk with them and I will fast track people into rehabilitation centres if they need it. Or I will maybe bring them into my church or I will bring them into an organisation that in the town that helps people with addictions or depression and stuff like that. I point them in the right direction and then I motivate them powerfully to aim at that and focus on it for everything that they're worth. And we've seen hundreds of people get set free. It's good news, isn't it? Anybody else? Well, listen, you, you've all... Oh, sorry. Yeah. How long did, did, you, did you tell your parents about taking drugs or did they just find out? My parents? Yeah. Well, it became kind of obvious after a while. <laughs> when I was kind of slumped over, you know, on the ground in the house in the living room. Or, and my poor mother had to, my mother told me before she died a couple of years ago, she said, John, I used to sit outside the emergency room in Jervis Street Hospital and listen to you getting your stomach pumped all over again. And she said, I used to pray that God would take you home because I couldn't watch you anymore, the pain that you were in. And I didn't think that you'd even last. And I said, well, Mammy, I said, I think God answer your prayers, but he didn't take me home like you expected. He set me free. And uh, so that's, that's how I'm alive today. That's a good question. Thank you. I'll hand back to you, Shema. Are you finishing it, are you? Yes, Gemma. Oh, Gemma, sorry, yeah, big problem. Thank you, I'm Gemma Gray from Ardmore Police Station, and I'll say I'm a police officer, and this is Belita. We work um, in a neighbourhood team there, and we're coming across legal highs all the time, every day. We're seeing people. same people and the effects the drugs are having on them, okay? But also, I want to remind you of the criminal element towards it, okay? It was yourself talked about working with horses when you're older. I assume you'd want to go to university to do that. If you're caught with drugs, whether it be legal highs, um, anything that is drug related, you're going to have some sort of record. You're going to maybe have an informed warning, an adult caution, or you may have a criminal conviction on your record. And you're not going to get to university with that. You know, and you'll not be able to do what you want to do when you're older. You know, your dreams could be shattered for, for what? You know, it, do, it doesn't make sense. You know, these are all smart girls, and I'm sure you want to go far with your lives. You just want to stay away from drugs. Also, if you want to go to America or anywhere like that when you're older as well, you'll not be able to get into places like that. Canada, you know, they, they don't want people with drugs convictions or any sort of drug um, on their record, okay? Yeah, like you don't know where you're going to be in 20 years time, no matter what, someone might try and hand you something now, but in 20 years time you may be wanting to go down a route in life that that five minutes you have now, you won't be able to go down that route because of something silly you did now, when you weren't even thinking. 
So I just want to close with that and just you know reinforce to you and reiterate what everybody said here how important it is to stay away from drugs and to, you know really think twice if you are offered it or you know anyone. Just think twice about what you're doing, okay? Thank you.